you don't have to live in pain anymore. This is the podcast where you'll learn the stories, tips, and tools to get back to your path to health. I'm Dr. J. Doom. This is Back At It with Dr. Decompression. Welcome. This is Dr. Doom. This is the Back At It with Dr. Decompression podcast, episode 37 in the new studio. Today, I'm going to be talking about a case, a lumbar disc protrusion case. Um, there's so many things in this episode that I want to talk about and shine light because I know a lot of people are suffering with this um, and it's relatable. It's relatable to a lot of people. Let's dive into it. Hey, the sponsors for this podcast, Powerplate USA and Pillowize, thanks for their support for allowing me, Dr. Dudum, to bring this information and drop it to you. So thank you to them. Let's dive into this. Most common location for an, a disc herniation in the lumbar spine is L4, L5, L5, S1. Can you guess the location of this disc protrusion we're going to be discussing today? Yeah, you guessed it. L5, S1, the most common location. We had a patient. He had surgery, lumbar discectomy, years ago. Helped with his pain disc re herniated its back he wants to avoid a second surgery it's so common we have to fix the cause the cause of the problem is not the disc the disc herniation or protrusion similar terms are a result of improper biomechanics sitting all day and lack of movement in the lumbar spine and the spine in general that is the cause now the disc protrusion is causing is the cause of the pain. What is causing the disc injury? That is years of dysfunction of sitting, fatigue in the back muscles, and also poor biomechanics and compression of the disc. That's what it is. So this patient had tightness in the back and he felt that sharp stabbing butt pain. Ah, my butt, it's in a spasm and then the hamstring becomes tight and you feel like it's tight. You feel like your hamstring. Have you ever felt like your hamstring is super tight and it's being pulled like a piece of yarn and you stretch it and you stretch it and you stretch it and nothing happens. It's still tight. Well, what's happening is the disc is on a nerve and that nerve, let's show our, our viewers, sorry for the listeners, the disc is on the nerve and that causes dysfunction of the muscles and it causes tightening and it causes nerve pain. So you stretch the muscle that you think is tight and it's not working. So here's a tip. Here's a tip. If your butt is tight or your hamstring feels tight or stabbing or spasmy, that contraction that you feel and you're stretching and you're giving it a great effort, you're going twice a day for two weeks. If it's not getting better guys, it's not your muscle. Find a different solution. It's not your muscle. Okay. That's what this patient had. He was stretching his hamstring like crazy and it wasn't getting better. Calls our office because finally, after weeks and weeks and months now, what are his symptoms? He can't walk more than 100 feet, 30 yards. He can't walk before his leg cramps up and he has to sit down. Imagine not being able to walk 100 yards. That's like parking your car at the gym and not being able to walk into the door or going to the grocery store and not being able to actually get into the grocery store. That is his problem. It's crazy. Couldn't sit for very long. When he sat for more than five minutes, his leg cramped up. The only position that was comfortable was a recumbent leaning back position or, or laying down in bed. Okay. And then one of the most common causes, I'm sorry, one of the most common symptoms of a disc herniation or protrusion that I've discussed many times that I ask specifically with every patient, hey, are you able to put your shoes on and socks on okay? Or is it, is it cause your hip and your, your leg to be painful? Oh my gosh, I have to wear sandals because I can't put my shoes on. Ding, ding, ding. He has a re-herniation of a disc. Okay, 
Knowing these symptoms, we order an MRI. He has an eight and a half millimeter disc protrusion. Now, what's important and why we order the MRIs is I've talked to with Dr. Cam before and on this podcast, why do we need to know the specifics about the MRI? For the viewers, we have a disc, I'm sorry, a bone and a disc and a bone. Okay, that's the joint. And then that hole, the foramen right there is created by the joint. The foramen or the hole is where the tiny soft nerve comes out that goes into your butt down your leg. We want that hole to be very big. We don't want any obstruction in that hole. That would cause constant, unrelentless leg pain. One thing that could be obstructing that hole would be stenosis, right? You've got a lot of arthritis. It's been there for years. And that hole naturally closes through Wolf's Law, which we've discussed before. And the body lays down more bone. It secures the area. That's one cause. The second cause, which we'll talk about right now, is this patient who had a lateral disc protrusion, meaning the jelly was coming out of the annular fibers or the disc, the material was coming out, and it occupied that hole. Now, there's different degrees of occupying that hole. There's on a scale of one to four, so you've got slight or moderate, mild, slight, moderate, severe, these different terms, it's one to four. Four would be severe. That means that that disc protrusion is pretty much occupying the entire foramen or the hole. There's no wiggle room for that disc. The most common symptom of a severe stenotic hole, I meaning the holes being closed by a disc material, is you have pain, unrelentless, it doesn't get better. The volume, the volume of the pain goes down. So it goes from an eight to a four or an eight to a six, and then it goes back to eight. It doesn't go away because you've got a disc material in the hole. How do you help and solve the problem? You have a physical obstruction of a nerve. You need a physical solution. Sorry for the listeners. I'm literally grabbing a spine and decompressing and showing that's a physical solution. Okay. Why this is important to know the exact location. We did a few different modalities with this patient on the decompression table. Standard protocol that I've developed over 24,000 treatments that I've done is I didn't want to angle him too much. And I didn't want to rotate him too much. I wanted to see how we did for a few weeks with this protocol. But I also had a backup plan if this didn't work. So I didn't just have one shot. After a few weeks, not much change. There was not much change in a few weeks. That's okay. I was bummed about it, but it was okay because I knew I had a second protocol. That's why it's so important to communicate with a patient. Hey, we're going to do this. We're going to see how the results go for a few weeks. If I'm not, I do. I have a plan. There is a plan, guys. So don't give up. The number one reason that a patient will fail my spinal decompression program they don't finish the program. It didn't work. Well, the program's seven weeks. You've done two weeks. Of course, it's not going to work. That's like saying you want to lose 10 pounds. Hey, our goal is to lose 10 pounds in, in two weeks. You know what? I'm just, it's been a week and I'm, I haven't lost 10 pounds. No kidding. It's going to take six weeks. To, that's what we said. So the number one reason is you don't finish the plan. This patient after a few weeks game changing treatment. And I'll explain right now what we did. The patient was laying flat on the table, slightly, slightly flexed, but he was laying straight. We didn't curve him left or curve him right. The second part of the protocol was we angled him away from the side. So if his disc protrusion was on the right side called a paracentral or a lateral, the right side occupying the right foramen, what I did is I bent him to the left. We opened up the space where that disc was occupying the nerve. You know, you're on your walk right now. You're on your drive. You're thinking, what do you think happened the next few weeks to this patient when we changed the trajectory of the plan? And we laterally bent him 
Again, the dock table that we have is the only table that I'm aware of on the market that does a lateral bend. Even with an at-home traction unit, you can laterally bend. What do you guys think that happened? Yeah, his symptoms, his butt spasm that was grabbing him and he stretched every day, twice a day for two weeks, didn't get better. It, gra it slowly released because the nerve that's telling this muscle what to do is calming down. His hamstring pain, tightness, slowly fading away from a eight out of 10 to a four, from a four to a two. And then days of, doc, my leg feels great. Felt great for like three days and then it kind of came back again. So we had to continue the treatment. Well, now this patient, this patient has been on spinal decompression for three to four months, call it four months. He's 95%. He went snowboarding the other day, okay? Four months ago, he was limping in the office. He, he barely walked from our parking lot, which is very close to the front door, by the way. He barely walked from the parking lot to the treatment room. He couldn't walk more than 100 feet. That's crazy, think about that. And four months later, he's snowboarding. His goal was to be able to be 100% and avoid a second spinal surgery. Well, the fact in four months that he's snowboarding, I think is, shows that we we helped him, right? It worked, the program worked, and it worked because we got the MRI and we knew that he had a lateral disc protrusion that was occupying the space. And there was a backup plan to the standard protocol that allowed us to angle, oscillate, and get that disc to reabsorb. Whoa, 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 reabsorb. Dr. Dudum, you can't, you can't say that. It's not going to reabsorb. Two weeks ago, we got the MRI report. We did a pre and a post MRI. So I really wanted to show how much better this patient was. And I wanted to make sure that I'm correcting some of the problem. It's very important. The papers that I'm shuffling are the pre and post MRI report. So this, ha this gentleman had a 8.3 millimeter by 23 millimeter disc protrusion occupying severely the lateral right um, foramen, which is the hole right where the nerve comes out. Post MRI. When we're looking at the post MRI, super important. Same radiologist is looking at the MRI and he's using the same measuring techniques pre and post. It's the exact same, exact same protocol. A right paracentral disc protrusion at L5 is noted with evidence, evidence-based treatment, evidence of reduction of approximately 30% when comparing the previous film study. Other note, because we want to know, hey, does it go in? Yes, we just proved that. And then number two, is it healing? Like, how does that work? Increased signal intensity within the intervertebral disc herniation at the L5-S1 is noted, consistent with healing or a reparative process. Not only was the disc reabsorbing 30%, the body was healing that disc herniation and shelling itself off so it doesn't herniate again. So excited for this patient and the results that we got. He continues to come in every two weeks. He wants to make sure that he still has a disc material that's five millimeters. It was 8.3, so it's reduced. But we want to continue to reabsorb as much as the body can, even though he's asymptomatic. He's doing fantastic. He does, what was his protocol? His protocol was spinal decompression, manual therapy, cold laser, power plate to help stabilize his small intrinsic muscles of the spine, the paraspinal muscles, and to reset his biomechanics. Corrective exercises at home. He wasn't stretching his hamstring anymore and he wasn't stretching his glute anymore. And you know what? 
he hasn't stretched it in three months, and you know what? Does his glute feel tight? And does his hamstring feel tight? Not one bit. It's not a tight muscle in your hamstring, and it's not a tight glute. You have a disc herniation that's affecting the nerve that goes into your glute muscle and your hamstring muscle. High probability that's what's going on. Obviously, we need to confirm that with other things, but that if you're stretching, it's not getting better. That's the problem. So excited for him. He's snowboarding. He's got his life back. That's what decompression is all about. And it 100% works, and we have evidence to prove it. So if you're doing something for a few, few weeks and it's not working, do something different. And if you trust a professional that has expertise in a topic and you have a program, follow the program. If you're not getting better in two weeks and it's an eight-week program, stick with the program. There might be a change in the program. So just be aware that a program is designed from A to Z. Don't quit at B, okay? Man, that was a good episode. Um, I'm so excited for him. So, hey, um, one of our sponsors, Power Plate, that we mention every time, was integral in this patient's recovery. So we love Power Plate. Thank you for them for sponsoring our office. And then also thank you to PillowWise for sponsoring um, this podcast as well. I want to thank you for listening. Hi, it's obvious that you're having lower back pain and you want to get relief. Text me the word relief to 925-291-5670 to download your free low back pain guide. Start fixing your back today and get the relief that you deserve. If you haven't subscribed to this podcast yet, we're showing evidence-based. How is it evidence-based? Because we're doing pre and post MRIs and showing results. And we're talking about things that you may be suffering. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can tune in when we drop these episodes every week. Thank you, everyone. You can follow me on all the socials, Dr. J.D. Dudum. Thanks again for listening. This is the Back at It with Dr. Decompression. Have a great day.